Hello, welcome to another practice problem. Uh, this time we're going to work on this member that is uh, fixed at one end and there's a gap between the wall and the member on the other end. And we're gonna use the superposition method to solve this problem. So the problem statement says, an 836 steel rod shown with a diameter of 10 millimeters is fixed to the wall at A. And before it is loaded, there's a gap between the wall at B prime and the rod of 0.2 millimeters. Determine the reactions at A and neglect the size of the, the collar at C. So we're given a modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascals. Uh, this is, you know, we're given information here stating that this rod is uniform all the way across, same material, same dimensions. So uh, what we'll do first is just go ahead and draw our diagram showing that we'll have the rod right as if there was no fixed support on the right here's my collar and only the loading P which is our 20 kilonewtons right and there's our second diagram right draw this a little more Second diagram with a loading uh, force, we'll say B, to push it back, right? So when we apply this load uh, up here at the first diagram, so diagram one, um, when we apply this load, there's going to be a deflection. We'll say that the wall was probably at one point right here, right? And what will happen is between this point and this point, there's going to be a deflection. Uh, we'll call it P. And then on our second diagram, when the force is applied to push it back, it's just going to go back to this point. So it will be, you know, say from here to here, like it was here at this originally, and it went back to the original position. So now we'll have a deflection here of, say, delta, delta B. So we know that there's a gap here. Uh, the original problem shows a gap of 0.2 millimeters. And so what we can do is use these two deflections and our known information of the 0.2 millimeters is then gonna equal the difference between these two deflections. So we'll say delta P minus delta B. Well. Delta P, we know all the information for this. We know the force, we know the length, and we know the modulus of elasticity in the area, right? 10 millimeters squared. So what we can say is delta P is then going to equal our loading, which is P, the length, but we're only going to use this 400 millimeters because it's only applied to this portion of it because it's applied to the first portion. So that length, so we'll say length A to C, and then our area, and Young's modulus. So we plug all those values in. Uh, be careful of units. So I'm going to write here units. And if you're careful with your units, you should get a value of 0 0.5093 millimeters. Doing the same thing for our delta B, we get our force B, which was the force acting to push the rod back to the, uh, to the wall. Our length, and our length is going to be the entire member, so from A to B, which is going to be the summation you know, of the two lengths, 400 and 800 millimeters, divided by the same area and same modulus of elasticity. So again, very conscious of our units. You should then get a relationship that says delta sub b, because we have an unknown force, and these other three are constants. The length is a constant, and the area and the modulus of elasticity. But our force is unknown. So you should get a relationship that says uh, 76.394 times 10 to the negative 6 multiplied to 
the force of B. Okay. So what we can do, <clears throat> now we know the deflection caused by P. We have a relationship of delta B. So we can plug these back into our original equation up here and solve to get the force FB. So 0 0.2 millimeters equals 0 0.5093 millimeters minus 76.394 times 10 to the negative 6 F sub B. So solving this, you should get the force F sub B then equals uh, four point, I'll just go ahead and do the conversion, 4.5 kilonewtons. We want to keep it in kilonewtons. That's a, uh, the unit of force, what our original unit was in, kilonewtons. And so just keeping it consistent, so our force sub B is now in kilonewtons. Now we know two forces. So we know we can draw another diagram. So we know F a p-value, we now know f sub b, now we need to find f sub a. Simple statics, right? We can just do our sum of the forces in the x direction, equals zero, positive going this way. So then we have negative f sub b plus p plus f sub a, equals zero and solving this equation we should get f sub a equals uh, negative 16.0 kilonewtons and this negative doesn't mean that we're wrong it's just I assumed in my diagram that this was moving to the right and that was uh, the wrong assumption so it's really f sub a equals 16.0 kilonewtons acting to the left and that's our reaction today.